Studs and chats, we got a Sniper Elite review early from GameSpot. Let's actually get right into it. If you're new, make sure to smash hit the subscribe bell. see inside the minds of fascist forces from World War II? Yeah, okay, the only thing that I am not a fan of is the WW2 setting, but let's see. And Sniper Elite 5 continues to build on those ideas even further. We spent two hours shooting <laughs> in their naughty bits on one oh, fairly expansive level. And here's the good and the bad from our preview. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm, I'm shaking. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm shaking. <gasps> Sniper rifles, submachine guns, and pistols. A few of them lean experimental, and developers said they were working with, among other places, the Royal Armories, notorious for debunking the realism of video game guns on our Oof. channel with our Firearms Expert React series. We'll have to get Jonathan's reactions to these weapons for- I wanna see this guy's reactions to current Call of Duty Vanguard, okay? These World War II guns have many customization options, and you can go find workbenches- Now that they added Snoop Dogg and they're adding King Kong, event which i'm 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 okay with king kong event though but most of the customization feels pretty tasteful with more period appropriate stocks wraps and scopes and suppressors which okay they were not so common at that time this will be good for players <laughs> just looking to have fun Lol, dude. And don't get too distracted by the historical accuracy if you're more of a weapons purist, a few things might bother you. Front grips do seem kind of just glued on there. And there's a variety of ammo types, including non-lethal bullets. Think Metal Ooh. Gear, just very gamey. We didn't see anything else egregious though, Not like bad. red dot sights. Guns now have iron sights, making it easy to go between- Oh my God, oh my God. I'm shaking our awareness, although I found them to be just a tad fiddly using a controller. <laughs> this is something I could probably have fixed in the menu. Dude, and not like an literally, my guy is like dead ass like that. You you see that weapon? Uh, you know, that's like PC FOV, that's console FOV. My guy, it can hurt the eye. Like, you go back, it, it can hurt the eye. Like, damn, like, damn, bro. Like, damn, man. Come on, bro. Keyboard. Put Outside it, of weapons, it, like, far there's a bunch of characters you can unlock by playing through the game. The reason for this level of customization is the game's desire to open up a lot of different play styles. In the presentation, developers said they're going for a big sandbox where you could do things like sit back and snipe, do run and gun Ooh, stealth, or just go in weapons blazing if you want to try that. We attempted all of these styles and some worked out better than others. The level we played Occupied Residence is pretty massive with lots of different terrain like farmland, underground bunkers, and a huge compound. The map also has a good okay. amount of Vertical Not space bad, with though. vines to climb and zip lines for traversal. The main thing that stands out about Occupied Residents are mechanics that add replayability. The level had multiple starting places that you could find and un Do you see yourself uh, purchasing this game? One if yes, two if not? Or an intelligence that give you optional side targets, and even some mysteries and puzzles. For example, you might find a chest on one side of a level and then the crowbar to open it on the other side. Or you might find a bunker that you can blow open loudly, or go find the guard that has the key so you can open it without alerting enemies. At one point, mm. I blew open a wall safe, never quite found out what was in it because I got swarmed right after that, and it was nowhere near any objective. That was my biggest takeaway from this level. There's a lot to discover, and it feels like it was almost designed like Hitman for you to replay it over and over and perfect your runs. And the, the graphics aren't too crazy, though. They're not bad, but they aren't, like, uh, you know, hidden. They're not hidden. You know, I'm not, like, mind blown or anything. It takes us back but... to non-lethal ammo. I'm willing to bet there are non-lethal playthroughs and a cheap... But gameplay so seems really good general, right, uh, uh, right now. Just a host of non-lethal options. And those takedowns are fun. They're even more effective sometimes than guns. And it's pretty satisfying to whistle at an enemy, get their attention, draw them over, and then drop a haymaker. <laughs> yeah, gameplay seems kind of good. Uh, I hope there's good progression system as well. There are plenty of environmental kills too, like dropping chandeliers and supplies on people. Yep. There's also a huge variety of red things to explode and the ability to mine or booby trap both vehicles and down soldiers. Oh, I love me them uh, booby, uh, booby uh, traps, okay? <laughs> I love me them. I love me them booby When it came traps. to enemies, the AI in this preview was a mixed bag. The way I remember it, I went back and played Sniper Elite 4, so don't quote me on this, but you could pretty much do whatever I'm you wanted on within you. confined areas. I'm gonna quote you on that one. In Elite 5, there's oh still God. section off places, but also roving patrols, and once you go past a certain alert level, larger portions of the map seem to come to life, become far more aggressive, and chase you down. Some areas didn't appear to be clearable at all with the loud approach, and enemies either seemed to respawn or there were just too many of them. It was hard to tell. The really cool part of larger enemy map awareness, though, is your ability to manipulate where they go. With careful planning, or eh. in my case, accidental planning, in one run, I set up a mine very early on, and then like 20 minutes later, when I'd forgotten about it, I was being cornered by enemy troops, and it went off. Eh. 
All the soldiers chasing me then ran to the other side of the- uh, Honestly though, it's not bad, but I'm not like shaking. I, I know I, I did like, oh my god, I'm shaking, but that was just like jokes, right? But I'm not really shaking though. So nah, far, not I shaking. Away. Where enemy Thoughts? AI falls apart a bit was once- I hope I get to shake by the end. High levels of alarm, huge packs of enemies would just sort of rove into your area and usually find you. The game didn't do as good of a job at communicating how they knew exactly where you were. Typically in the Sniper Elite series, there's a ghost image that shows your last known position and that's where they go. But there was really no way to know where these giant packs of soldiers would roam, so you would usually get discovered. Another mm -hmm. place the difficulty in AI didn't really work as well were indoors, where the cramped camera made it hard to know exactly when it was safe to round a corner or enter a room without being immediately seen. Uh, not shaking, not shaking. Like funneling multiple bad guys into doorways or calling them over to the same set of bushes and repeatedly knocking them out. But listen, One man. ran right in front of me to check out a decoy I just put down. And listen, man, d don't cancel me on Twitter. This is just an opinion coming at your way right now. I'm gonna I'm drop 20 pounds of opinion real quick. It is better than Vanguard, though. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it is better than. <laughs> It is better than Vanguard. To let players have oh fun, my God, it's not necessarily game-breaking. It's just something to consider. Another behavior I don't remember seeing in other Sniper Elite games as much, although, again, my experience is more limited. I'm just joking, man. Don't cancel me, brothers. Don't cancel me, man. Enemies would lay on the ground and continue to spot you or stumble around a bit after being hit. It was really cool, and I felt kind of bad in some cases for not oh making a clean God. kill. In summary, the enemy in the game is great most of the time, but could probably use some tweaks at higher alert settings. Yeah, the yeah, sniping could part use of some Sniper tweaks. Elite is as fantastic as ever, with those signature free anatomy lessons you get each kill cam. I was able Damn. to use terrain and the environment to great advantage, including taking out a truck driver. Oh, not in the ball sack, bro. Like, not in the ball. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I can't. I, I just can't. Not in the ball sack, bro. Damn. 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 The wooden still gets you. There are multiple ammo types that play into the system with advantages and disadvantages. Armor piercing can go through metal and stone. Soft points do far more damage to troops, but can't go through helmets or wood. And subsonic rounds are quieter with less of a chance to alert, but also do less damage. Oh then there's match ammo that has less bullet drop and non-lethal as mentioned before. Dude, why my guy is, is like that? Why is he looking at the, the a, a, he's aiming down sight like that, bro? It's so close, just put it far away, dude. Put it far away, man. Damn. The unlock tree is fairly robust for this kind of game. There's three categories, which are combat, equipment, and body. I immediately went to one that lets you pull out your pistol when you're in a down state, and it saved me multiple times. It's an unlock tree that seems more accommodating to a wide variety of <laughs> Notice the theme going here, like <laughs> players or stealth players. Pow. Or time with it to see how truly useful it is. Pow. You are pretty powerful from the start, and the game is forgiving already, allowing you to self-revive as long as you have a med pack. So again, oh, yeah? this all feels designed to open up multiple runs of each map at higher and higher difficulty Yeah, homie teabagging. The sound design and music are really excellent. The game felt like a caper with music swelling at the right times or adding suspense when you were sneaking. It was really cool. And when you shoot a rifle, that sound wave travels off into the distance. It's just really satisfying. Okay, listen, man. It is already, <laughs> already better than Vanguard. I know that these are two completely different games, okay? But... Listen, man, we're talking about the Babushka setting. This is WW2 setting. Not really a fan of because it's been played out, right? Like this, it, like this setting has been played out like crazy, my guy. We need different settings immediately, dude. Immediately. I, I think, bro, like we need a game in modern time. Uh, was Sniper Elite 4 in modern time? Which or used to give you hints or WW2? Where an invading player, kind of like Dark Souls, might be, but we didn't actually get to see this mode yet. The plot isn't worth spending a lot of time on, kind of boils down to stop Nazi from getting super weapon. And that's not really what Sniper Elite players come to this series for anyway. It's mm. just all about that long range shooting. The mission that we played though was the second mission with the game taking place around D-Day. D-Day happening somewhere in the middle of the plot. Sniper Elite 5 is out on May 26th, and GameSpot has a lot more coverage to go of this and other shooter titles. May 26th, Head on over to GameSpot so that's, and Game that's like a month away. Let me know your thoughts, click on this video on the screen, and I will see you right there.